you today. Minus 11 at the airport at 604. Good morning, everyone. The city of Calgary may lose $20 million in revenue because of the economic downturn connected to the low price of oil. City economists say the $20 million is based on predictions of slower growth and lower tax revenues. That number could be higher depending on what the province does. It may decide to cut funding to address its massive debt. For now, city administration is suggesting that the city of Calgary should stay its course with its current financial plan, which includes a four and a half percent increase in property taxes. As for what politicians think, there are lots of ideas. Some suggesting that cutting spending to lower the property tax rate to give households less of a tax burden is the way to go. Councillor Sean Chu is even floating the idea that council and city employees take a five percent pay cut in light of uncertain economic times. Councillors are always welcome to bring back their ideas. We had uh, two whole weeks of talking about the operating budget line by line by line in the fall. I don't recall any suggestions at that time from those councillors. Uh, if they have them now, you know, if they've had some time over Christmas and over the break to look and come up with some new ideas, I'd love to hear them. City Council will be getting another economic update, by the way, in the middle of this year. By summer, it's expected the economic picture will be much, much clearer. The ethics behind crowdsource funding and the possibilities for abuse are in the spotlight as millions and millions of dollars are raised every day, in some cases with little oversight. GoFundMe and YouCaring are two websites that let people raise cash and make donations to help friends and total strangers. Crowdsource funding is used a lot for things like paying for unexpected medical bills not covered by health care. But what are the ethical considerations behind these appeals for money? The medical community does not have an official position, but one Calgary doctor does have some words of caution. It certainly is susceptible to abuse, and I wouldn't want to say that we know that more and more people are abusing this, but the platform is subject to abuse and it may not be legitimate. Most of them seem to be. The people who are asking for funds may or may not be legitimate. The people who are providing funds may or may not have done reasonable diligence to understand what is the value of this procedure that I'm actually providing funding for. GoFundMe and YouCaring have raised close to $1 billion for various kinds of ventures, including healthcare procedures. There are also many other crowdsource funding websites out there. It's now 606. Federal Health Minister Rana Ambrose is urging all parents to get their kids vaccinated against preventable diseases like measles. Ambrose is actually calling it irresponsible, her word, to not get kids immunized because she says vaccines are medical miracles that save thousands of lives. If you stress about taking your child to get a shot, you're not alone, but there are ways to make the experience a positive one. Holly Furfer explains. When children go to the doctor, the first question they usually ask is, will I get a shot? So what's the best way to prepare them for a vaccination or other shot? Language is really important when dealing with needles. Using the words like shot or hurt or pinch actually have been proven to increase anxiety. What works better is to use words like bother and comfortable. Like, we've got ways so this won't bother you. Distress is not just pain. It's fear, it's pain, and it's how much attention they're paying to the shots. To address that pain, you can give your child ibuprofen or acetaminophen before they get a vaccination. Another way to decrease the distress of injections is to have somebody focus on something else. When you're playing or looking at something else, you're not able to pay as much attention to the pain and it decreases fear. It's also important to praise children and leave them with a positive memory, even if it didn't go so well. And let them know that every time they go through something like this, they get stronger and better. That's Holly Furfer reporting. So far, by the way, there have been no reported cases of measles in Alberta this year. There are six confirmed cases in the city of Toronto, one in Manitoba, and more than 120 confirmed cases in various parts of the United States. A Calgary cardiologist is urging everyone to ask the women in their lives about their heart. Dr. Anmal Kapoor is shining a light on how high the risk of heart disease is among women. Recent stats show more women are affected by heart disease compared to men. Cardiovascular disease is now the top cause of death, disability, and hospitalization for women over the age of 35. And statistically speaking, 38% of women die within a year of having a heart attack compared to 25% of men. This Valentine's Day, uh, take a moment as you'll be buying roses. 
uh, do ask about our heart. It's very, very important. At the same time, um, heart is an important organ, and heart is not the most intelligent organ in the body. Uh, so heart needs uh, to be taken care of. Dr. Kapoor, by the way, says it's very important, of course, to eat lots of fruits and vegetables to increase your heart rate with 30 minutes of exercise at least five times a week. There you go.